A time to stand, Rox and Shoals and Sons and Daughters formed a kind of loosely connected block of episodes covering the destruction of the Catcher Cell White facility and the aftermath for our heroes. Behind the lines, Favor the Bold and Sacrifice of Angels form a much tighter block, much more like a three-parter of one story than three separate but linked ones like the first part was. It starts out with Sisko's log entry, announcing that the Defiant has been spending the last three weeks going up against the Dominion, and it shows. The Chief comes in with the power supply for their phasers. It's empty, and he gives it to Sisko, who is so proud of this sign of what his baby's been doing, killing, just like she was born to do. Take a good look at this, people. The next time you see this, I'll be shoving it up Weyoun's ass. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. It says that we will fight, and we will keep on fighting until we can't fight anymore. Yes, sir! You don't just throw something like this away. There's laws about that sort of thing. You leave it in a gas station dumpster at night and hope no one sees you. It's their ritual to show how hard they've been working kicking Jemadar tail, but right now Admiral Ross wants Sisko to focus that boot on a Dominion sensor array. He comes up with a daring plan to fly through a normally impassable area of space to hit the Dominion before they know what's happening. Operation Happy Slap. On DS9, we get to witness the first real acts of the Resistance. Kira and Rom swiped Damar's pad while he was in Quark's and left it outside the Jemadar's quarters. Those sneaky devils. What's so special about secretly moving somebody's stuff around? Well, <laughs> it turns out that DeMar was recommending that, with supplies of Catcher Cell White running short, that if they can't bring down the minefield, that the last ration for each Jemadar should have poison in it so they don't run amok. How did you get a hold of DeMar's pad anyway? Oh, I'm good with my hands. Oh, that's what Lita says anyway. Well, needless to say, the Jemadar don't much like this plan and decide they should make their position very clear, perhaps with a quick application of weapons fire and a bit of makeshift chiropractics. Well, Damar, I gotta compliment you. You've done a real great job of making sure the Jemadar don't run amok. Wayne and Ducat are showing how strained their alliance is as they try to deal with the aftermath, but they have to still pretend that they're united to ensure that this problem doesn't escalate any further. Smile. I'm smiling. Ah, as natural as the smile on the face of an Applebee's hostess. But the one who's really pissed off is Odo, who reads Cure the Riot Act because they agreed not to do this plan. And by they, I of course mean Odo, who then got up and left, after which they figured they'd go ahead with it despite this stirring argument of don't do it. The last thing I need is to have you running around causing mayhem. Well, what kind of resistance do you want them to be? The ones that send harsh letters to Ducat anonymously, leaving a burning bag of poop outside Wayne's door? As Kira points out, what Odo really wants is an ordered station, despite being a member of resistance movement whose only weapon is disruption. I'm not really sure how I can make the irony of that position any more clear. Even as Odo demands to know if they're questioning his loyalty to the cause, even though he despises every means of advancing it, the female changeling arrives. Seems she was stranded on this side of the wormhole, so she came to see Odo, since he was at least another shapeshifter. You caused the death of a fellow changeling, Odo. Turning you into a solid was the only punishment severe enough for your crime. Yeah, they were royally cheesed off at him over that guy back in the adversary. Even when Odo pointed out that the changeling left him no choice, it was either stop him or let him kill all of Odo's friends. The changeling said that siding against them under any circumstances is a crime. No changeling ever harmed another. That's why they infected him with a fatal disease. And I'm talking about in Broken Link. For everybody who shows up on my Weyun bio video and insists on saying, no, it was Section 31 that infected Odo. That's not what I'm talking about. Seriously, do you not pay attention to what people are saying to you? In their minds, though, the changelings were doing the right thing. Harming another changeling was unacceptable, even if they were in the midst of committing mass murder, because the central philosophy of the changelings is, we're the center of the universe. And now that I'm a changeling again, you come here as though nothing ever happened? We have forgiven you. Ah, in that case, fuck you very much. 
Odo wants nothing to do with her, but she soon arrives during his regular meeting with Dukat and Weyun, much to Weyun's pleasure. Founder, you honor us with your presence. Uh, Weyun, I get that you're not looking her in the face because you're trying to show her great respect, but staring at her boobs is not really much of an improvement. Dukat tries to approach her as an equal, but she's not having it, especially with the wormhole still mined, with thousands of Dominion ships just waiting to come through. He assures her that he's still winning the war, but Weyun pipes in to say that he's the one winning the war, and also, Dukat's a jerk. When they leave, she talks to Odo, and this time he brings her back to his quarters to show what activities he's been getting up to. For all his anger over what they did to him, he has to feel a bit of resentment for what Kira did, and there's the fact that he's been alone for so long that, that something about her starts to get through his defenses. He talks about his infatuation with Kira, and eventually she turns the subject to the link. He gives in, and soon they're doing the jello with two backs, as they say. Sisko gets called into Admiral Ross's office for a bit of a shock. He's going to be the new adjunct, which means a whole host of things he's now going to have to do, such as finding out just what an adjunct is. But most importantly is that he's now going to be moved from the big chair to an office. It's not his job to take the Defiant on missions anymore. It's his job to send it on missions and wait to see how they do. Bit of an adjustment. I mean, this was supposed to be Crimson Skies, and it's just turned into Command and Conquer. Kira has a bit of a run-in with Damar, who's handling security now that Odo is indisposed. And, of course, who better to handle security than a guy whose carelessness caused an incident that left a bunch of their troops dead at each other's hands? She finally finds Odo in his quarters. She's naturally worried that sharing his mind with one of the evil rulers of the Dominion could give up their resistance cell, but Odo is more aloof than usual. Nevertheless, Kira convinces him not to link with her again, to avoid any unnecessary risks. Back in the Defiant, Dax is now in command, and Sisko takes one last look around the bridge before they head off on this dangerous and perilous mission, fraught with adventure and excitement. And don't worry, we won't have to waste any time on that. We have better things to do, by God. Like watching two Jell-O people intermix. Okay, I kid, we don't see the mission because that's not the point. It's not the story of destroying the Array. It's about Sisko, who has a habit of leading from the front, to suddenly have to do so from the rear to be the one to send his people on dangerous missions that he formulated and hope that he made the right call, that they'll come home safe. Back on the station, the resistance movement is discussing plans, but not getting anywhere because Kira is trying to befriend Odo, so she's shooting down all the plans she knows he won't agree with, and he doesn't much seem to care because he's probably thinking about the link. <laughs> That's our Odo. First he's always thinking about Kira, now he's always thinking about the founder. Boy, you know, I've never seen someone so pussy-whipped who doesn't even technically have a dick. Quirk comes stumbling in for two reasons. First, to completely steal the show with his drunken comments about the occupation. And second, because the reason he's drunk was that he was pumping Damar for information, and found out that Damar found a way to disable the mines so that the Dominion fleet could then come through the wormhole. He's going to use the deflector array to technobabble a way out to stop the mines from replicating. Why didn't you think of that when you set up the minefield? Uh, I don't know. Uh, he doesn't know. So the only option is to disable the deflector, but it's an area rigged with alarms, so that'll be Odo's job. Deactivate them briefly during his security sweep so that Rom could get in and do his sabotage. The problem is that he's a bit distracted by that female changeling. He has so many questions about his people that need answering. On the homeworld... Are you always in the link, or do you sometimes take solid form? We prefer the link. But on occasion, it is interesting to exist as something else. A tree, perhaps, or yeah. a cloud in the sky. <sighs> Must be a great way to relax after a long day of grinding civilizations beneath your heel. The nice thing about living as a giant ocean is that it's so easy to wash the blood off your hands. As much as she tries talking about the wonders of his people, the fact that's so hard to forget is all these wonderful things are built on the bodies of millions. It's easy to talk about how wonderful things are for you when you're at the top. Whenever you hear them talking about themselves and comparing against solids, just imagine fat cat billionaires looking at working class stiffs and you see what a bunch of assholes these people are. These people just can't understand the simple pleasure of taking a bath in the blood of dinosaurs we've secretly cloned in our hidden volcano lair. I pity them. Who's up for a pterodactyl drumstick? 
How many of us are there? One. And many. It depends on how you look at it. So to boil it down, the answer is one or more than one. How much is many? Or are you using troll math now? While all this is going on, Cisco has nothing to do but wait for the Defiant to report back. And despite knowing he can do nothing, and even Worf's prompting, he can't stop thinking about it. After all, this is a man whose last ship was destroyed by the Borg, where he was powerless to stop the death of his wife because he wasn't with her. The situation obviously weighs heavily on his mind. Ben? Admiral. It's late. Yes, it is. Why are you up? I... I was just getting a piece of... water. A piece of water? I don't have to explain myself to you, Captain. Are you coming back? In a moment. I have to go finish dictating to my secretary. You don't have a secretary. I don't have to explain myself to you, Captain. Admiral Ross knows what's bothering Sisko, but he doesn't give a lecture or this is what it means to be in command, blah 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 blah. He just goes straight to the point. Sisko is now responsible for an entire tactical wing. He's got to be focused on the good of all those people and not just about his own ship. But they do make it back. But Sisko can only observe it as a distant figure of authority, listening to tales of combat heroics and watching Dax do that drain battery ritual before he heads off to meetings and reports and analyses. The life of a man who works behind the lines. Meanwhile, the plan to take care of the deflector is underway, which is going to take a combination of subtlety, guile, and nerve. Here's your fruit! And Rom's basket of fruit. The plan goes ahead, but there's a snag. Seems Odo's decided that now, when he's supposed to be doing his part, he's going to link with the changeling. Nice one, Odo. You have any idea how pathetic it is that in an operation where Rom is involved, you are the weak link? No, Rom's the one who's right on schedule, setting off the alarm and winding up getting caught by Damar. Kira storms through the station in a way that makes every person with testicles take one glance and pretend they're doing something that requires their immediate undivided attention. She reads Odo the Riot Act, the Mob Rule Charter, and the Storm the Palace and Throw the Prince Out the Highest Window memorandum, which is made all the worse by Odo's ecstatic indifference to it all. Are you saying you forgot? I didn't forget. It just didn't seem to matter. Oh, well that's different. If you'd forgotten, I'd be upset, but you just not given a shit? Oh, that's totally understandable. That's a perfectly valid excuse for why Rom's being interrogated by Cardassians. I hate to say it, but I liked you better as a fascist than as an apathetic, self-centered pothead. If you could experience the link, you'd know why nothing else matters. Sakura so storms off, and when questioned by the female changeling about whether or not this bothered him, he admits it doesn't. From the start of the episode, when he was so passionate and upset about what she did and what she thought, to this, where nothing she says or does matters to him in the least. Really burned that bridge good, Odo. Post-episode follow-up. Annoying character goes to Odo. Because damn you, Odo, you broke my heart. Final score for Behind the Lines is 6 out of 10. It takes advantage of the serial to make changes to the status quo, and even though we know everything is going to go back to normal eventually, in the midst of all the chaos, these changes have a more palpable sense about them. Next time, these events continue to move towards a resolution to this conflict in favor of the bold. Staring.